Bueno, yo creo que los cocineros somos en este momento personas con mucha visibilidad y yo creo que es una gran iniciativa de René montar un encuentro como este porque en el fondo esa visibilidad muy criticada algunas veces también puede ser una herramienta para ser portavoces de todas estas personas. Uh, I'm going to be translating. Um, what Andoni wants to begin this presentation with is saying that chefs nowadays are in the middle of a, of a spotlight. We have a visibility and he wants to make a, he wants René to know that he recognizes that this effort, put all this effort in order to use that visibility, use this spotlight for something good like it is, is something very good. Uh, Hemos visto proveedores, gente que está tan implicada como los cocineros que hay aquí, implicadas con su trabajo, con una tradición, con algo que está por encima de lo que incluso es la sensorialidad de los propios productos y, de lo, y del impacto económico que pueden tener. Tienen un impacto en la cultura, tienen un impacto en el medio ambiente, tienen un impacto tremendamente profundo. We work with uh, food producers, suppliers that are more than just suppliers. These people have huge commitment, commitment that goes beyond any boundary, even beyond the boundary of uh, sensorial qualities within the product. Commitment is about everything for them. In this moment, after 20,000 years, after 20,000 years making queso de diazabal, it's easy to say 20,000 years. The queso de diazabal is in danger. Y está en peligro porque eh, hay industrias que están intentando meter razas foráneas mucho más productivas que no, que no pastan eh, libres, que no mantienen los entornos, sino que están estabuladas, metidas en un establo. Esto es seguramente presión, eh, presión económica y es una situación que se está viviendo en todo el mundo. Quizá lo más llamativo es que uno de los grandes cocineros del País Vasco, que se le llena la boca hablando de su territorio, de su cultura, es la imagen de una de las empresas que está provocando esto. Y esto es lo que no puede ser. Ok, en el Basque country hay una tradicional cheese, it's called Idiazabal. Idiazabal cheese has been in the region for 20,000 years, and that's easy saying 20,000 years, but one was see to live 20,000 years. Um, this cheese is full of history because it preserves more than just the product, but the species, the breed of sheep that is used in order to produce it. Nowadays, Idiazabal cheese in, is in danger of extinction. It's in danger of extinction because multinational cheese producers are using new breeds of sheep that are more uh, profitable, uh, long-lasting, and instead of um, feeding on the grasses like you just saw, they're in a barn or they're just fed, fed uh, other kinds of food. He wants to make special, um, there's a special point here that He believes that this endangerment of cheese is because of uh, famous chefs who have actually turned the, their back into, into their environment and become the image of these multinationals that produce these new cheeses. When I talk about the local, when I talk about the local, I don't want to talk only about the ámbito of the local that corresponds to me. I think that the world today doesn't have borders. I think that when we talk about the local, what we have to talk about is the values que se le presuponen a lo local. Por eso para mí es tan importante que no se pierda un queso en el País Vasco como que no se pierda un producto en Brasil o que no se pierda en, en Filipinas, que seguramente no iré, en la, no iré nunca en mi vida. Pero para mí es tan importante. Y no podemos olvidarnos, no podemos olvidarnos que en muchos casos las personas que son entusiastas de la gastronomía son los que consumen productos asociados a un territorio, productos culturales, productos locales de otros lugares y que son los que mantienen con la compra de estos productos pues todo lo que es un, un ecosistema, un, un entorno social. No nos debemos de quedar solo en lo local. Debemos de exigir los valores de lo local, pero hemos de ayudar que otra gente en el mundo también tenga derecho a su desarrollo. ¿no? Okay, when he speaks about local, the term local, he's not making a reference to our environment. Our, our environment is for granted. We know what we do, we do it for a long time, and we're committed to it. When he refers to local, he wants everyone to understand that it's local everywhere. It's as important to preserve cheese in the Basque country as it is to save something else in Brazil or in Philippines. Local is about 
the environment using what it's around. Chefs, food producers, food suppliers are the ones that are in closer contact with this uh, chain of commerce. And it's us who should, with everyday actions, um, encourage buying from what's around us, encourage the producing of what's around us, buying the products from our close environment is not only an act of buying local, it's an act of support, cultural support, historical support, and preservation support. Por eso hemos llamado a nuestra ponencia uh, algo así como para proteger la bio biodiversidad, para proteger los, es los espacios naturales, hace falta proteger los entornos culturales, que son las que en muchos casos los protegen. This is the base of the name for this presentation. In order to preserve the ecosystem of our environment, we need to preserve the cultural base that is behind it. Ajá. Bueno, y para no ponernos tristes, so that, and in order for, not us to be, for us not to be sad, hemos traído tres platos. We're going to be presenting three plates, really fast. Bueno, a mí me gustaría, bueno, o me gusta pensar que es poesía en el plato. We like to think it's poetry in some way put into a plate. Bueno, el primero, el primero. Okay, the first plate. Bueno, es una cosa que hemos hecho este año, muy curiosa. Estos son hojas de camelia. These are camellia leaves, wild camellia leaves. Y curiosamente la, la camelia es, eh, es familia del té, es otra variedad de camelia, pero el té no deja de ser una camelia. Uh, camellia is the same family as Camellia sinensis, the, one, the plant used to produce tea. But this one is uh, a different species, a different uh, variety. It's very hard, it's very rich in fiber. Uh -huh. Bueno, la metemos en una solución con cenizas, que son bastante alc alcalinas. What we have here is a, a solution with ashes, charcoal ashes, and um, baking soda in order to make an alkaline solution. That's something we learned from our friend uh, Harold. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to keep going, make it easier. Our time is ticking. <laughs> Herbs stay in the solution for uh, 10 days, and when they come out, they look like this, which is a bit different from what we first saw. Everyone can see them. Okay. After cleaning them in water, rinsing them in water, we're going to boil them. Boil them for 10 minutes, and something magical happens. All these outside layers of the leaf suddenly break, and we end up having this. I don't know if you can put your camera here. Can you see that? Oh. I'm going to put it here so you can all see it. So what we're going to do with this leaf is, in order to make it even more Oh, no, you cannot see it. Well, yeah, it is. We're going to dry it in the oven, blanch it in the syrup to make it sweet and crunchy, and uh, we're going to serve the plate with something else. These are flax seeds. Anyone knows flax seeds? They're very, well, they're very rich in fiber, and they're used in dietary in diets. Uh, in Spanish, they're called lino. Anyway, flax seeds, we're going to mix them with uh, milk. Okay, the, we have to mix the seeds, and then it will look like this. Texture is about the most important thing. So this is how it looks. Nothing important now. We have to heat this up, put it in the heat up to 70 degrees Celsius. That is 158 Fahrenheit for our fellow Americans. It will look like this. You see all this mucilage? All the fiber from the from flax seeds goes into the milk. So now we have to strain it and make it um, take the seeds out. When we do this, we need to really cool it down fast in order for the little portions of fat in the milk to freeze. And then we're going to whip it in a mixer. What this will give us is that crystals will collide against each other. They will stay together because of the crystal shape and we will have another structure. So while it whips, it's a, I'll show you the leaves. Okay. 
this is how the leaves look now. It's same leaf as before. Explicado que está azucarado. Explicado que está azucarado. Yes, it, it went into sugar, I said that before, into syrup in order to make it sweeter and crunchier. And now, if you could put the camera here so you, everyone can see the meringue. It has the textures of a meringue, but there's no protein in it. There's no okay, egg, there's nothing. It's just the milk and the mucilage from the flax seeds. I'm going to turn it. Explicado que es de té? Yes, the milk, I, we made a previous infusion with the green tea, just to give it more sense to the plate. The name of this plate is Camellias, that's it. Explica el polvo, como hacemos el polvo. Una vez que tenemos el merengue hecho con el mucílago del lino, lo que vamos a añadirle, vamos a espolvorearle Té de roca, té silvestre de roca. What we have here, it's the final uh, element of the plate, is a mixture of lactose, which is a non-sweet sugar, xylitol, which is a very sweet sugar that gives you freshness in your mouth. It's like all these mint uh, pills that are super intense in freshness. That's it. And there's a little bit of, uh, in Spanish, it's called té de roca. I don't know if anyone knows it. Rock tea, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not a name in English. Anyway, it's very herbal and it's very, uh, it gives a certain thickness in your mouth because of the astringents. Mm. It's just a compliment. Osvaldo explica que sale en zonas de montaña bastante altas y que hay que ir a buscarlo y que después se seca. This tea goes in uh, super high mountains and uh, we need to go collect it very, very, in very remote locations and then we have to dry it in the restaurant. And well, the meringue, what happens with the meringue is that just like a whipped cream, if it's not cold enough, it won't whip. Uh, could, you, could we please see this? Now, this is the texture it has right now. It needs more cold. So we go to the next plate, and then we come back to this one. Vamos, uh, can we go to the video? video. Vamos con el siguiente vídeo, por favor. Si no, podemos pedirlo. La siguiente receta. Michelle antes ha explicado una técnica, ha explicado una técnica que si hoy se le hubiese ocurrido hacerla a un cocinero, seguramente poco más o menos hubiesen dicho que está, que está loco. Que es utilizar la cal para generar pectatos de calcio alrededor de las frutas o de las verduras. Okay, Michelle was previously explaining a technique where he used the show. Show is calcium oxide and if he was using it any, anywhere in Congress right now, people would think he's, he's crazy. Lo singular de la historia, como ha explicado Michelle, es que esta técnica la han utilizado pueblos centroamericanos durante cientos de años. Y simplemente ellos la han utilizado como un método de conservación para el maíz, para eh, hacer las tortas de maíz, pero previamente para conservar lo que son los granos de maíz. Entonces, el, eh, básicamente lo que hacen es eh, la nixtamalización, lo que se conoce como nixtamalización. Nosotros hemos recuperado esta técnica y dándole mucha menos... Eh, bueno, en dulces habitualmente se ha utilizado en calabaza, tanto en Centroamérica como en España. Nosotros lo que hemos hecho es aprovechar la misma técnica, utilizar este mecanismo, es decir, dejando la cal, metiendo verduras o frutas en cal que tengan pectina, se generan esos pectatos de calcio. Si solo lo dejamos tres horas, generamos una capa de pectatos que después, a la hora de cocer, permiten que la capa externa tenga cierta tersura y internamente estén bastante cremosos. Ok, esta técnica es solo sobre usar el calcio de en una tradicional way drawn from a Mesoamerican cultures, peruan, mexican. Uh, there's an immersed, uh, they're immersed in water for three, in, uh, in this calcium with water for three hours. There's a reaction. Calcium will make a pectin from any vegetable react and form a pectat, which is like a more resistant and hard uh, layer. It's very thin, and the next step is washing them, rinse them thoroughly, and then bake them. The technique will preserve the shape, but it will cook it on the, in, on the inside. 
bueno, como el, el, la siguiente cosa singular que van a ver en este plato es las hierbas que ponemos al final. Son hierbas alófilas, es un trabajo de investigación que hicimos con los antropólogos. Re, re, se, se hizo un registro de todas las hierbas que sabíamos que desde épocas muy antiguas se habían consumido en algún momento de la historia. Bueno, por aquí se ve la cremosidad, ¿no? Okay, you can see how it's creamy. The next thing he wants to explain about this plate is uh, marine. It's a, a research project, project that we have ongoing. Um, it's a re the rescue of coastal herbs. All the herbs that are in the in the shore that love the saline environment. Um, and there's a project that is about rescuing about 10 or different species. Uh, well, he wants me to say again that the, these plants love salty environments, and that's where they express, um, like in more amazing ways, because the aromas are more complex rather than when they are outside the saline, the, the salty environments. In the next phase, what we are achieving is that small producers or people who work in minifundios can have new varieties that can compete with a different against the large companies that many times what we are trying to do is that all these people that are in, uh, in the research and in the rescue of these plants, not, they are not only doing it for the poetry of the thing, of the rescue itself. We are helping them in order, uh, we're helping, helping them to create a market for this, develop a new product, uh, use some thought and give a, a, some use so that you can eventually find it in, in stores, in uh, health food stores or anywhere. Esto es una de ellas, el triglochim. That's the one he was talking about. Its name is triglochim maritimum. Esta ya se está, ya se está cultivando. This one is already being cultivated, produced, and yes. sold. Y bueno, también hay que decir que se, se cultiva en, en tierras con mucha cantidad de sal que no se podría cultivar nada más. Um, if it's cultivated away from salty environments, this won't grow and it have, will have no flavor. Bueno, básicamente explicar que es un proyecto de investigación que sobre 25 plantas al final se seleccionan las que están en marcha. Out of 25 different plants, we just chose five, which will be the ones that will be developed further in the next stages. Bueno, como ven, la cocina que hacemos nosotros es muy sencilla. Es muy, muy sencilla. Like you see here, food is really simple. There's two or three ingredients, but it's about being careful with each one of them. Bueno, pero intentamos que sea lo más poética posible. We try to make it the more poetic as possible. We like to eat stories. ¿Con qué vamos ahora con el siguiente ya? ¿Video o esperamos? No, no. Otro. Otro, otro siguiente video. Vale. ¿Podemos ir con el siguiente video, por favor? Um, next video. Next video. Yes, could we yeah. give it another Next video? Next video, yes. please. Yeah, they, they know it. Yeah. Go, go, go. Bueno, aquí una sorpresa. Eh, ¿Cómo se puede hacer creatividad simplemente cambiando la mirada de las cosas? Sin hacer cosas tremendamente sofisticadas, simplemente el cambio de mirada. Okay, this is an exercise of surprise. This is about being creative without, without being uh, exotic. It's just changing the glands that we put up on food. Bueno, van a ver un plato de estos que son ambiguos, que no sabes si es una ensalada, es un plato de marisco, es un plato de verduras, está en terreno indefinido, pero también muy interesante. This is plate, like many others in the restaurant, that is not easily labeled. You cannot tell if it's an entree, fish course, salad. It doesn't need to have a label because it works fine in any position. Bueno, en este caso cogemos topinamos, los metemos también en la solución de calcio. This is Jerusalem in artichoke, and we do the, we do exactly the same thing. They will they will go into the solution of calcium oxide and water for three hours. Ajá. Y los dejamos tres horas y después los vamos a, a cocer. We're going to rinse them and we're going to bake them exactly the same way. Bueno, ahora va a salir cómo cocemos los las nécoras. Hay un error. Hemos cambiado la temperatura. Le damos unos grados más. Okay. Next step in the recipe, we will be cooking crabs. 
we use uh, super huge scraps, but you know they're not to confuse anyone. We chose these ones because there are scraps everywhere. Uh, we already changed something in the recipe. The recipe says we're cooking at 60, 62 degrees Celsius, but we're doing at 70. That's uh, again 158 Fahrenheit. Básicamente, el concepto es muy sencillo de cocción de la nécora. Si el agua hierve a 100 grados y se evapora, y a partir de los 50, 55 grados, ya sabemos que hay proteínas que están modificando la estructura. Bueno, nosotros nos preguntábamos por qué hay que cocer las nécoras a 100 grados y hervirlas en agua. Si en realidad, aunque parezca una paradoja, las estamos secando. The reason for these temperatures, and so specific temperatures, is very simple. We know that water boils at 100 degrees, but we already know that from 50 degrees we have already some protein modification and how structures begin to change at this temperature. So it was just a work about finding the exact temperature where we get cooking points and the aromas. Bueno, básicamente, lo que les he dicho, ¿no? Cambiamos la... If we cook at this temperature, 62 Celsius, the texture is the same, but the, the, the aromas are like it's a raw crab. Explica por qué lo ponemos primero a temperatura ambiente. We cool down in three different temperatures in order for the crab to reabsorb the juices. If we just put it directly into cold water, uh, all the water that was released from the crab will stay outside. If it's slowly put down for 15 minutes, 15 minutes and again 15 minutes, the crab will suck and all the juices again. Bueno, ahora van a ver cómo queda de jugoso. Van a ver cómo preserva toda la jugosidad. And this is where you can see how juicy it is, how all the flavor is there. Bueno, y aquí van a ver la sorpresa. Tenemos una sorpresa. And well, he, he says that this is where the surprise comes. Bueno, ven las fibras, ven las fibras de, de la nécora. You can see the fibers, that's uh, the crab. Las ven, las siguen viendo. You still see them? Se ven bien, ¿no? Okay, don't we? Bueno, pues en la izquierda se ha hecho So now we can see that the one in the left is the Jerusalem Ratichu. The texture and the shape is exactly the same as the crab. This is how they did the cut. You see the calcium preserves the juice inside of the vegetable, so it's the shape is as it's raw, hard, but in the inside it's juicy and soft. Again, the plate will be very simple. Con temperatura, con la carne del cangrejo encima, natural, muy natural. Jerusalem artichoke, warm, and the warm uh, crab, of course, and again some corals and herbs. Un poco de los propios corales. Un poco de aceite de oliva. A little bit of olive oil. Y un ajo marino. And um, that is marine fennel. Yeah, fennel. So I will, I will just finish this quickly. Va a montarlo. Vamos a conseguir que monte. Está al lado ya. So again, it's whipping. Uh, like I said, it's uh, like whipped cream. When it's really cold. It won't whip. If it's warm, it won't whip either. But if it's in the right temperature, which is uh, one degree, two degrees, crystals will collide and they will get this magical texture that is fluffy. Ready. ¿Está bien montado? Un poco, sí. Vale, vamos. 
Well, it, it could be colder, huh? Dile que estamos fuera yeah, it could be colder. Okay, but can you see the texture I was talking about? Mm -hmm. This is like a stable meringue. And uh, the colder it gets, the harder it gets. Well, anyways, if uh, we're going to pass it around if anyone wants to give it a try. Okay, please, airless please, meringue. Please, yep. 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 That's it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.